Hi, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Delphine, and today I wanted to talk with you about uh, luxury. Um, what is luxury nowadays? Uh, are the big brands we hear about still luxury? Um, does it still make sense to keep shopping there? Yeah, all of this. <laughs> um, I hope everything's good for you. I'm a bit tired, uh, but I thought I still wanted to sit here and, and talk with you because it's a topic I was talking about with some friends uh, recently after some, some new experience I had. And um, I have a feeling it's something everybody's experiencing, but um, there are also different takes on this and different opinions. So I'm also curious to know your opinion. Uh, you can let me know in the comment section below because this is just just me, um, some thoughts and, and opinions about all of that. and. Oh, the experiences I've had, which again also don't reflect uh, everybody's experience. Uh, so yeah, I'm curious to know how you feel about this whole topic. So yeah, first I thought one point is what is luxury? What is your definition of luxury? You know, and I thought <clears throat> we might all have a different definition of luxury actually. And in my case, for example, I thought about it and my definition of luxury is basically two things. Um, quality and service. I expect um, the best quality and I expect um, the best uh, service possible around the, the products or whatever is being sold. Um, whether it's a physical product or a digital product, uh, by the way, it's uh, the whole experience uh, around it. And the price is actually not a part of it. It's often quite expensive because yeah, best quality, best materials, uh, great service and so on. This has a cost, which is often reflected in the product. Um, so yeah, but it's not um, for me necessity. Um, and that's for me what luxury is. And you have a lot of brands which are traditionally branded luxury brands. Um, so Cartier, Dior, Chanel, all of that. And I feel recently with the way some of these brands are going on kind of my two levels, or at least one of the two, I don't know whether they still qualify in my referential as luxury. And if they don't, then I have no way of really justifying spending the crazy amount of money that went for the products. Um, if they are not at least some luxury. There is still, of course, the investment aspects that one can see, but I, it's not something I'm really pressuring. I'm not really buying things with the purpose of selling them back or making money out of it. And if I buy something and I'm never going to sell it, then ultimately I don't really care that the prices are going up somewhere else. Yeah, the value of my good is going up, sure. But if I never sell it, then <laughs> I don't make any profit there or anything. Um, but still, they still, of course, uh, in these big brands, the investment value. So in my case, so I'm going to talk about a few brands. Um, so, you know, maybe my opinion about Chanel. I used to love the brand. I'm currently on a boycott of them. Uh, I made a little video talking a bit about this a bit more in detail. I will put it there. So they're one, they're one aspect. But I see... Um, more and more brands where maybe the quality does not decrease because the channel not only is the service bad but the quality too which is kind of like top top of the pop but in a lot of brands i feel like the service is disappearing and this is for me an extremely important part of the whole luxury experience because to just buy a great uh, article or great thing with best quality materials i have there's so many options there's so many places um a reason for me to still buy, let's say, the bag from Louis Vuitton or to still buy a jewel from Cartier is because, well, of course, there is still you can still get the brand, you can, might get some designs and so on, but it's also you have this whole service around it and at least, you know, you, you feel like, okay, uh, it's an investment and everything, but it's there is a whole experience that goes also on top of it. And recently, the experience I've had have been not that good actually, where I will arrive, uh, whether Cartier or other places, and there's just queues outside, like really queues. And I'm not speaking about going shopping on a Saturday. I mean, last time I went on a Friday, once I went, I think it was a Monday, um, and there are queues outside. And um, this annoys me 
tremendously <laughs> because um yeah it's it's things that will take time once you go in the shop of course it will take time to look at your articles because you don't go and just try things out yourself um so even if you have only four or five person in front of you you could easily be waiting 45 minutes one hour because of five person um so we had the experience recently with my sister uh, she was there visiting and we wanted to go check some luxury goods and um, we arrived at the shop and there was a queue outside only four or five persons I, I said no I'm sorry I'm not queuing not to spend this amount of money um, no I'm not um, and my sister was like no come on that's way to beat maybe it goes faster than everything we waited 15, 20 minutes, I think in the 20 minutes, one of the four people in front of us went in. And then I said, yeah, you know what? It just makes no sense. We have better things to do with our time um, than to just wait in the queue. And yes, the things they are selling are nice, are lovely, but it's not like we cannot find other lovely things somewhere else. <laughs> First, there are other luxury brands, also legacy brands. Um, for example, I never had issue with Van Cleef and Apples. I never had to queue. It, always very very nice no service was always really tip-top perfect so you know we could go even other luxury brands we still have this level of service or we could even go for other brands um, all together which are maybe not classic luxury but will still have uh, great quality and uh, potentially a better service so yeah I was I was really annoyed <laughs> I was really really annoyed um, and I was thinking a bit about it. Why? Why is there that there's this queues? They, they they were not so much queues before. It's it's quite a recent phenomenon. I mean, I have several articles from Cartier. I've been several times to the shop, and um, it's the second time actually I have to wait for them uh, over the past one and a half year. It's the second time, um, but otherwise before that I went several times and I never had any issue. Um, it's the same Hermès, so I'm a long time customer of Hermès and here. And it's only since the last, I think, two years that I've had to wait. Um, the good thing, at least with Hermès, is in my case, they always uh, let me and the other people also waiting inside. So you will enter, they will tell you how many people are in front of you. They cannot tell you exactly how long you will have to wait, but they will let you in. And one, there were quite some, quite some, some people in front of us, and then they offered to put you in some sort of system, and then you can go keep shopping. And when um, you're next in line, or there's just one person in front of you anymore, they will send you a little message saying, "Hey, um, you should come back uh, in the next ten minutes. It's going to be your turn." And this I found nice because they value your time. You can still go and do something else. Why are the other brands not implementing something similar? I don't understand. Like my time has value. I'm, I'm sorry. I have all the stuff to do than one hour queue. Um, if I, I don't know, it just blows my mind. And at Hermes, if you don't want um, to go outside or if you have maybe not that long to wait, you can wait inside. You can sit somewhere. They will offer you something to drink. So at least um, you're waiting comfortably. And for me, this should be the bare minimum what uh, the other brand should be affording to. And not just making you queue outside under the rain, in the wind, in whatever uh, circumstances. This is just not okay. Um, this is just not okay. <laughs> it's just not luxury. Um, and and yeah. And so I was thinking again, what, what's the reason behind? Because, well, they could implement these kind of systems like what Hermes uh, does. Um, and I don't know if it's to create a sensation, or a, an impression of exclusivity, of desirability, because so many people are queuing outside, so, you know, like it will appeal to you and you will think, hey, you want to go? I don't know if that's this. If that's this, no, please. <laughs> and I don't know if that's work, actually. I would be interested to see some data. They probably maybe work on some people, but they're also probably losing other people like me. So I don't know if overall they gain customers with this system. I don't know. I would be curious to know uh, if there are any data. And another thing I thought is, well, they just don't care. <laughs> they just don't care, which is actually terrible. <laughs> because then, again, if they don't care, I can go somewhere else. And a third reason I was thinking is maybe they have difficulty recruiting. They actually maybe lack um, personnel. They don't have any now sales assistants. But this raises again some questions, which is like, why do these brands have difficulty recruiting? Why do these brands have difficulty finding people when 
other brands which are not as prestigious um, have no problem having enough staff. Uh, other shops uh, less prestigious have have are fully staffed here. So is it because they offer bad conditions for their employees and so on? In which case, I think it's a bit um, not okay. <laughs> um, maybe there is indeed more um, interest in the younger generation for luxury. And so the amount of people visiting their shops are increased, but then increase the number of sale associates, recruit one more, I don't know. I don't think that's so far-fetched, especially when you see all the price increases they've been doing um, and the margin they have. Um, don't tell me you cannot afford to uh, recruit one more person to keep offering this luxury experience. Um, it belongs together to me, at least. And yeah, so I've been thinking about it. I don't know if you have any insight or any opinion on that, or maybe you don't have the issue where you live. I don't know. Lucky you. Um, but I've been, I've really, I've really been wondering. And then I thought, okay, it's maybe because I don't know, for some reason on Friday, there are more people, but on Tuesday and Wednesday, there are less people. And so it's not worth for them to hire someone, but they could still, I mean, a lot of shops are still hiring people part-time for when they know there is more demand. So, I, I just, you know, I try to figure it out and I just cannot find a good reason that will justify for me and will make it acceptable for me um, to wait and have this experience of just waiting outside uh, in line, uh, which again for me is not a luxury, not a luxurious experience. I don't know what's going on. Um, I feel that it's spreading and getting more and more. And I'm not the only one noticing it. I just notice around myself uh, that some people are okay with it and say, yeah, well, um, I really want this thing. Um, it's exclusive. Um, it, it's worth wait doing the queue for this thing. I understand the point of view. Maybe that's yours too. Uh, it's definitely completely valid. Um, and I will be willing to make the queue also for like really specific, special design things or something like that. But I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like in French, we have an expression that I don't know if it exists in English, that, that you're being a pigeon. So you're being basically a bit taken advantage of somehow at some level. And I don't know, it gives me a bit this feeling and this is not a nice feeling. And so I've, I've, I've had a shift. Uh, I have my birthday coming soon and I was thinking what to buy for said birthday. And originally I thought about maybe going to check at Cartier a few things. And now after my recent experience, to be honest, I have to go because I have to get a watch from them repaired. But uh, I, it's been already three weeks or four weeks and I have not found out because I don't know when to go. You know, sometimes I'm like, oh, okay, I could try to go now. But then I realize oh, it's Friday afternoon. There's probably going to be queue. I don't want to go. And they say, yeah, you can make an appointment with us, but I have small kids, I have a life, I'm already spending all my time shifting my appointments around because a kid is sick there or there's an unexpected work uh, appointment or something going on. So I don't want to add that to the list of things that I have to make appointments for and shift around. Uh, I cannot take it anymore. And again, for me, this is also, if I want, I don't know, tomorrow the weather is nice, I have actually a bit time because I don't know, for whatever reason, um, I worked very good. I finished my work earlier. The kids are in the daycare, healthy, all is good. I have a bit time. I could go shortly shopping. Yay, why not, right? Yeah, but no, because I don't have an appointment. I don't know. I know this is a rent. I'm renting. Um, <laughs> but I would like to know if, if this is just me in my little corner. I don't think so because, I, as I said, I have friends which... Um, noticed the same uh, things but have a different take on it that it's not a big deal and they don't really care and i have other friends that are also annoyed and have the same take on me than that where they see the queue they keep walking um and yeah i don't know i'm just curious to know what is your uh, your take on it what is your opinion what do you think let me know it all in the comment section below i always like to to chat with you and um yeah and that's it i stop my rent i stop my rent <laughs> and i will put uh, another video here in case you have not seen it yet and if you've enjoyed this video and you would like to see more you can of course subscribe to my channel uh, by clicking there i promise i'm not always doing such kind of rents <laughs> um and yeah i wish you a lovely day Bye, guys.